Let me ask you, you're successful in business? Are you using it for God? Then you are not a success. You're successful in your career? Are you using it for God? If you're not using it for God, then you are not a success. You are taking a course in college. Are you using it for God? If not, you cannot claim godly success. Matthew chapter 7, we're going to read verse number 6 of Matthew chapter 7. It says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Exactly what I'm going to preach tonight, it says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. We have some dogs listening tonight. We have some swine too. You know what swines are? Pigs. The Bible says, you do not, you do not throw holy things to the dogs. You do not even give pearls among the swine. Why? They, pigs don't appreciate swirl, pearls, isn't it? They think it's food, you know, and that's Bible. You know, I first preached this in July of 1986. How many of you were here in July of 1986? Will you please raise your hand? Want to find out if you're here. All right. Then I preached this the second time. On September 9, 1999. How many of you were here? On September 9, 1999. All right. Then again, I preached this on October 4, 2010. Again, I preached this on October 1, 2014. And the last time I preached this is in November 20, 2016. Today is August 20, 2023. And I'm going to preach this again. The title of this message is Pearls Only for the Pearl of Great Price. Pearls Only for the Pearl of Great Price. I'd like you to understand what the pearl of great price is before we continue on. In the book of Matthew chapter 13, verses 45 to 46. Matthew 13, verse 45 to 46. I'm opening my Bible now because the verse is not in my outline. Crazy people, isn't it? Matthew 13, verse 45 to 46, it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, this is a parable. And the parable pictures something we ought to understand. The pearl of great price is a picture of the ecclesia. The Lord came and purchased his ecclesia with a great price. And that great price was his death on the cross of Calvary. You are the pearl of great price. 
Because you're the pearl of great price, I would think that there's no swine here. Is there? No. If the pearl of great price, there would not any dogs here. Am I right? All of you are sheep. You're not even goats. You're sheep. Um, you might look like a, a goat, but if you're saved, you're, 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 you're a sheep. There are some that look like pigs, but if you're saved, you're a sheep. The ecclesia is the pearl of great pride. And therefore, when we look at this, you're going to find out that God gave us pearls. And you know what the pearls are? Word of God, right here. These are the pearls. And these pearls are only given to the pearl of great price. That's why here, the Bible is an open book. Amen? There's only one book that we preach in this pulpit. And that's the Word of God. And the Word of God is open, an open book to all of us here. We're not giving you any story, not giving you any kind of an analogy or any kind of a whatever it might be. It's the Word of God. So if you are a sheep and you are part of the pearl of great price, you listen. Amen? Are you listening? Okay. Now, there are some pearls that I would like to give tonight. I'm not going to give them all, but there are some just pearls that I chose to give to you tonight. All right? These are verses. These are subject matters that matters to us. These are words that we use every day. These are verses that should all be applicable to us. These are verses that would correct us, that would rebuke us, that would exhort us, that would teach us. These are verses and words. So the first pearl that I would like to use tonight is the text for godly success. The text for godly success. Now, if, if I'm going to ask you how many of you want to be successful, all of you will say, yes, I want to be. I don't think anybody would like to be a failure, isn't it? All of us want to be successful. I'm not just talking about success. I'm talking about godly success. There's a lot of people that can claim success. The question is, is it godly? Amen? Is it godly? Or it is just a selfish ambition of success. Or it is just something that you want and something that you care for. It's something that you're going to use for yourself. It's not something you're going to use for God. Let me ask you. You're successful in business? Are you using it for God? Then you are not a success. You're successful in your career? Are you using it for God? If you're not using it for God, then you are not a success. You are taking a course in college. Are you using it for God? If not, you cannot claim godly success. You know, there's only one verse in the whole Bible that speaks of success. Where is it at? Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. It says, this book of the law. And what is this book of the law? The Bible. Agree with that? The Bible. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then 
thou shalt have what? What? Good success. It's not just success, it is what? Good success. Now, the verse does not tell us uh, that you ought to read this book. The verse tells us that you ought to meditate on this book day and night. And meditating is more than reading. Do you realize that? It is studying. It is learning. A lot of people read the word of God. But the question is, are you learning? Are you studying? That's the reason why we have discipleship program here. And I got upset yesterday in our meeting. Why? Because it's not moving. We have prepared seven booklets with seven lessons each. Am I right? For your discipleship program. And some have quit. Hello? Why? Why have you quit? Why? You do not need that anymore? Listen, I've been reading the Bible for more than 55 years, and I still need it today. I've been preaching this Bible for more than 55 years, and I still need it today. I'm not just reading it. I'm studying it. I'm meditating it, dedicating my life to it, and I still need the Word of God today. The Word of God is the only ingredient for godly and good success. The Word of God is the only book that speaks of good and godly success. That's what you, you know, you can write that down. The Word of God is the only book that will give you good success. And then, secondly, faith is the only ingredient for success. Faith. You have faith? What kind of faith do you have? Define to me what faith is. Can you define it? Thirdly, obedience is the only condition for success. Obedience is the only condition for success. And that is, of course, obedience to God. You know, in the Word of God, there are a lot of Bible characters I could be able to mention to you who have become successful. Joshua, the one that spoke in Joshua 1.8, is a man of good success. He said that himself. Caleb is a man of good success. Amen? When they went to the promised land, he was already 80 years old. And he looked at that mountain. When he went there when he was 40, he looked at that mountain and he claimed it for God. When he was 80, he said, give me that mountain. I claim it for the Lord. Anything that you claim for God, you're using for God, God will give that to you. And you know what? The Lord gave Caleb that mountain. It's not called what? Mount Hebron, is it? Listen. You have your own mountain to climb? You want to climb it? Claim it for God. It's going to give it to you. Now, it's not easy. Am I right? Mountain climbing is not easy. Diba?
There's a lot of troubles in climbing mountains. There's a lot of pitfalls there. But hey, if God gives that to you, he'll be there for you. He'll be there for you. How about Abraham? Abraham was a man of good success. Do you know why? Because he's a man of faith. He believed God. And when he believed God, what did he do? He obeyed God. See, the first, uh, the first evidence of faith is obedience. He obeyed God. He followed God all throughout. Now, he didn't know where he's going to go. He did not even know what he's going to experience. But even if he did not know, he knew God, and that's faith. He knew God. You might not even know the steps you take. You might not even know where God would like to direct you. But if you have faith in God, he'll get you through. That's faith. Joseph was a man of good success. But I would like you, you know, I would like you to know what happened to Joseph, and I don't even think that you want that to happen to your life, isn't it? See? His brothers were jealous at him, you know, and later on his brothers sold him to the, uh, uh, to the human traffickers, you know, and then afterwards, the Midianites brought him to Egypt. And when they reached Egypt, he was sold to the Egyptian captain called Potiphar. Am I right? And there he was. And at that very moment of time, the Bible says God began to bless him. And because God began to bless Joseph, and God was with Joseph, that even Potiphar's household was blessed. Do you know why? Because there's a blessed man inside. Listen. And you listen now. You backslidden people. And you don't care about God. You only need someone in that house that is faithful. And that house will be blessed. Do you realize that? How much more if everyone there is faithful? Niva? Oh. Isa lang kailangan maging faithful dyan. Kahit lahat dyan, backslidden. Isa lang. God will bless at home. Now, Potiphar was not even a believer in Christ. He was a pagan. Do you realize that? But because Joseph was there, God blessed that home. But did Potiphar's wife consider that? No. She tempted Joseph so much, and, and uh, Joseph didn't do anything. He tried to parry all of those temptations, you know. And because he, 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 he did not uh, go down to those temptations, what happened? He was put to jail. He was accused of rape, and he was put to jail. And there he was in jail. Hey, listen. Even if he was in jail, God was with him. There was a baker and a butler in that jail. And that baker and the butler began to have dreams. And, and Joseph interpreted those dreams. And Joseph had one condition to the butler. Because that baker, he said, you know what a dream tells you? You're going to get killed when you get out of this jail. Then the butler, he said, 
When you get to this jail, you know what? You'll go back to your work. You'll go back and serve the king again. But hey, listen. When you go back to your work, don't forget Joseph. Well, he went out, went back to his work, became a butler one more time, and he forgot Joseph. Sometimes when you are very much occupied with self, you even forget those that, would, that are helping you, isn't it? You become so much occupied with your own self that you forget there are people there that help you. But one day, the king dreamed something. He remembered Joseph. He called Joseph. Joseph went there, gave the dream, interpreted the dream. And just imagine a man who was sold to slavery, was put to jail, became the first prime minister of Egypt. He was the prime minister in a country of pagans. He's the only one that believed God. Because of that, Egypt was blessed. Egypt was blessed. He was a man of good success. A name, a name called Alexander, cooperator, said, someone has defined success as the art of making your mistakes when nobody is looking. Did you understand that? No. Herbert Bayard Swoop said, I cannot give you the formula for success, but I can give you the formula for failure. Try to please everybody. And you're going to fail. Woodrow Wilson said, I would rather fail in a cause that will ultimately succeed than in a cause that will ultimately fail. I'd like to give you 10 rules for successful living. You want to write it down? Go ahead. And what are those 10 rules? First, find your own particular talent or gift. God gave you one. God gave you several. Find that. You have it. Amen? You don't tell me the Lord did not give me any talent at all. No, he gave you one. Find it. Two. Be big. I'm not saying be proud. Be big. Think big. 48 years ago, I came here in Santa Ana and started to work. I had big plans. But because I began to realize that Filipino pastors do not even have big works. So, you know, I, I tried to shelve those big plans, but then I still had it. And I began to pray for it. You know what I, be, what I began to do? I began to read books of successful people. Book, a book of successful pastors in America that built successful works. I was just starting here. 48 years ago, I was in a small wooden house that gets flooded inside. Sleeping in a bed 
that is more than a hundred years old. It is as if that I do not have any future anymore. But you know, when you trust the Lord, you know you have a good future. You will not believe if you started with me, it will be overwhelming for you to realize that we have this building now. Do you realize that? I would walk on visitation, inviting people, knocking on doors. And I would walk from here to Guadalupe. And that is 15 kilometers away. I would walk. I would walk from here to the, to the Luneta. I would walk from here to PWU and PLM and Quiapo and Divisoria, knocking on doors. You think that's easy? Huh? You think that's easy? You don't realize the hardships, the difficulties, the problems I had when I started this work. God blessed it. And each of you is part of that blessing. Amen? Amen? Each of you. Even at times, I don't believe that you are part of it. But you are. So, think big. Be big. Have big plans. Third, be honest. We're living in a very dishonest world, isn't it? Nevertheless, be honest. Fourth, live with enthusiasm. Live with enthusiasm. You know? Just be positive with what you do, you know? Hindi yung, ah, wala rin mangyayari sa buhay kong to. Number five, don't let your possessions possess you. Don't let your possessions possess you. Number six, don't worry about your problems. Problems will come. Bible says that instead of worrying, you pray, isn't it? Now, all of us worry every day, right? but you, were, you, know, you, have, you want to be successful in your life, then don't worry about your problems. Seven, look up to people when you can, down to no one. Look up to people when you can, down to no one. So being, don't look down at people. Number eight, don't cling to the past. Past is past. You cannot do anything about it anymore. Move on. Here in the Ecclesia, yeah, it's not just moving on. Move up. Amen? It's not just moving on. It's moving up. Don't cling to the past. Number nine, assume your full share of responsibility in the world. Assume your full share of responsibility in the world. 
Don't always blame someone for your fault, you know? Di ba? We always want a finger point. You know, when we were, when I was in the committee hearing of the Committee on Public Order and Safety, and we were actually investigating the BUCOR, Bureau of Correction. You know the Bureau of Correction? Muntinlupa, all of the prison places in the whole country. And when you know, we, we begin to investigate them about corruption, everything like this, always finger point somebody else, always blame someone else. Shapui. Oh, hindi naman ako gagawa ng ito. If I was not ordered by this person, kanu palagi, I was ordered things like this. I'll be going to chairman. Mr. Chairman, he's a play of words. We're just going around here. These people are finger pointing, blaming someone else. I want them to all resign. Nagisain ba? Hindi. But hey, some will resign later on. They're, they're trying right now. So you know, assume full share of responsibility in the world. And number 10, pray constantly and what? And confidently. Don't just pray. Pray constantly. And pray confidently. Why would you pray and worrying too much? So, why pray when you can worry? You want to look all before your time? Quit praying and start worrying. Am I right? Except my whiskers and my mustache getting white right now and getting gray in my hair. Do I look like I'm 72 years old? Huh? And you know what? I have more people to worry about than you. I have more problems that my hands can ever handle than many of you. Do you realize that? Huh? Some of you are only 45 years old. You look like you're 70. How do you check that? Pray constantly and confidently. Amen? Good. So that's the first pearl I'd like to share with you. You know, when I first preached this in 1986, how old was I? In 1986. I wasn't, I wasn't even 40 years old then, isn't it? In 86? Huh? I'm 35 years old in 86. You know, when I preached this, I preached this for three hours and a half. At 72, I can still preach this for three hours and a half. That's why I had the break so you can go to the restroom. And don't go there anymore until it's over. But don't wet the chair. The second pearl I'd like to share with you is the text for blessing or the text for prayer. You know what? This is my favorite verse. My favorite verse on prayer. You know, on prayer. Huh? My favorite verse is 1 Peter 5, 7, isn't it? But my favorite verse on prayer is this verse. What's that? Jeremiah 33, 3. 
Dali lang, dali lang i-outline i- yan, di ba? Ang sabi, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. What did I tell you? You know, just for God to tell me, call upon me is a blessing already. Can you imagine God is telling me, hey, Benny, you call upon me. Di ba? Blessing na yun eh. Oh, di ba? Halimbawa, sinabi ng isang taong pinagkakatiwalaan mo, ano yung respeto mo, okay? Anything you need, call me. There are many times I would t- talk to people and I would tell them, anything you need, you call me. But if you need money, don't call me. Sabi ng Panginoon, call unto me. Blessing na yun eh. Then sinabi niya, and I will answer thee. Ba, mas blessing yun, di ba? Can you imagine? The Lord is telling us, you call unto me and I'm going to answer you. Just imagine that. It's a blessing already. Am I right? And then it says right here, and show the great and mighty things. Wow, that's, a, that's more blessings. Di ba? Ang sabi ng Panginoon sa akin, you call and tawag ka sa akin. And I will answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things. Oh. Which one? Which thou knowest not. Yung mga bagay na hindi mo pa alam, yung mga bagay na nais mo, yung mga bagay na hindi mo kayang gawin, I'll do it for you. Look, I never wanted to be a pastor because I know I can't do it. I'm unworthy. You know? I'm undeserving. I was telling God, Lord, you don't want me. I'm going to destroy your work. No. How many times have I refused to be the pastor? But I'm so glad that God pursued me. God never left me alone. God said, I don't care how imperfect you are. I want you. I don't care if you say you're undeserving and you are. I want you. Do you know why? You know why I want you? Not because you have talents, because you have gifts. I want you because I have grace. I'm going to make my grace sufficient for you. And you know what you see here? They're all grace. That's why I always say this is a monument of grace. Amen? When I came to Santa Ana, I stayed in a very small house, a very old wooden house, that moves when the wind blows. It does not only rain outside, it rains inside. That's where I live. No, we're, later on we lived here. We, we're, we're buying that now. That house across the street, we're buying it now. I made a deal with the owners. He wanted 20 million, I said no. Give that to me for 15 million all in. I'll pay you in cash. We live there for how many years, ma? For about what? Five years? More than 10 years? We live there. We occupy that house. And do you know how many we were? How many were we there? Almost 20, because almost all of the persecuted members of Exia lived with us. I think Ellen's one of them. Her two sisters also.
Now, you don't want to stay there now. I mean, you know, Jason lives there. and he, They're transferring to a better place. That I guarantee you. We're going to buy that thing. We have a, a better design for this building. We're going to build a bridge over the street right there. And this building will be dome-shaped. It's now fan-shaped like this. Are you with me here? That is what God is saying. Call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Do I know you? No, I don't. Do you know me? You don't know me, but God gave you to me. Amen? Am I blessed because God gave you to me? Are you blessed because God gave me to you? I was telling our pastors during our, you know, we had the Antio conference. I said, you know what? You're better off because when you started your work, your mother church supported you. Ako walai. Zero. I even had to ask my friend because I cannot even afford to buy rice. Can you imagine that? I cannot even afford to buy rice. So I asked my friend, ano ba yung pagkain na mabigat sa chan? Na hindi ka agad magugutom. Saging. Kamote. Di ba? Oo. Kaya araw-araw saging. Iba-iba lang ang luto. Dilupak, pinirito, nilaga, inihaw. Basta saging. Di ko alam, may side effect pala yun. Yung palang side effect nun, yung alburanas. <laughs> I cannot even afford to buy coffee. You know? Can you imagine? I cannot even afford to buy coffee. Oh. Nalutunan ko to eh. Because when I was eight years old, my father told me to cook rice and I cook rice without putting water in it. Can you imagine that? Gayahin niyo ako. Oh, wala well, tubig. Anong ginawa? Nag-imbento kami ng kape. Tinutong na bigas. Sino sa inyong umiinom ng tinutong na bigas na kape? Ayan. Oh, Ang mga matanda na ito, meron ang mga bata. Puro mga tanda. Di ba? Oh. Kaya nag advertise ako nung araw eh. Sabi ko, uminom kayo ng TNB. May kape ka na. May kanin ka pa. Tinutong na bigas. Anong pagkain ko nung araw? Di ba? So that when you look at this verse here, Ginawa ng Panginoon lahat sa akin eh. It's imagine, uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't even own that. I was renting it, that place, in 2444 Latore Street. I was just renting it. In fact, I wanted to buy it, but somebody bought it first before I did. You see? And napakaliit na lugar. Siguro, mga ano lang yan, mga 100, 100 square meters lang. Okay? Do you know how much we own now? We own more than 2,000 square meters of prime property here. We own the tallest building in this place. Do you realize that? Huh? We own a six-unit townhouse 
in this place. We own the corner lot out there. You know, I stood here in 1978, I think. And I told our people, kakaunti lang kami noon, siguro mga dalawang daan lang. And I, you know, I told them, huh? by God's will, we are going to own one-third of the whole Santa Ana area. Siguro pag nagkikinig ka sa akin, sabi mo, yabang naman ito. Di ba? Yabang naman magsalita ito. Think big! We're gonna own one-third of this place. Oh, ano ngayon? Di ba? Oh. You go to the rotonda, we own the tallest building there. And I praise God for that. Kaya, tandaan nyo itong pearl na ito. The text for blessing and prayer. Di ba? Oo. And claim the promise of God. Now look, ah. Prayer is not old-fashioned. Prayer is a present occupation for future blessing. That is what prayer is. A present occupation for future blessings. You know what the power of prayer is? Let me sh just share with you what other people say. I don't even know if they're saved, but I don't. J. Edgar Hoover, I don't think he's saved anyway. But he used to be a very famous director of the FBI. And you know what he said? He said, the spectacle of a nation praying is more awe-inspiring than the explosion of an atomic bomb. The force of prayer is greater than any possible combination of man-made or man-controlled powers because prayer is man's greatest means of tapping the infinite resources of God. Do you believe that? Yes. Invoking by prayer, the mercy and might of God is our most efficacious means of guaranteeing peace and security for the harassed and helpless peoples of the earth. Pray. Pray constantly and confidently. We have Isaac Newton's testimony. Isaac Newton was a believer in Christ. He used to be a slave trader. All right, you know what he said? One of the greatest scientists who ever lived gave this witness to his faith in God. Sabi niya, I can take my telescope and look millions and millions of miles into the space. But I can lay my telescope aside, go into my room, shut the door, get on my knees, and get close to God than I can when assisted of all the telescope and material agencies on earth. Think about that for a while. That's the power of prayer. Another one is this. It's a text for generous giving. I've always preached this to you. Luke 6.38 tells us, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Who said this? Jesus Christ said it personally. Anong sabi ng Panginoon? Give, and it shall be given unto you. So give. Don't take. Give. Let your hand be like this, not this. 
All right? And here we find the four levels of blessing. Ano yung una? Good measure. Ano yung pangalawa? Press down. Ano yung pangatlo? Shake and together. Ano yung pangapat? Running over. There was one time I asked you, di ba? What is your level now? Huh? Where are you now? Hindi ka pag-graduate sa good measure. Dapat kung matagal ka ng kristyano, graduate ka na rin. Kung matagal ka na rito, graduate ka na rin. Oh. Hindi ka pag-graduate sa press down, dapat graduate ka na rin. Oh. Hindi ka pag-graduate sa shaken together, dapat graduate ka na kung matagal ka na rito. Hindi ba? Pero nangyayari, ha? Ah, nasa shaken together ka na, nagbabalik ka sa good measure. Am I right? Babalik ka eh. Hmm. Folks, nakita ko to. And you know where I belong? Running over. I am now in the level of running over. Pabunta na ako langit. Ikaw, bumaba ka na naman eh. Pabunta ka na langit. Pabunta ka na naman sa impyerno eh. Why? You're inconsistent. You cannot even be a consistent cheerful giver. And you know what? If you are not a consistent cheerful giver, you are inconsistent with your faith in God. Ano sabi ng Bible? Shall men give into your bosom? God will use men, whether unsaved or sabian. God will use men to bless you. Amen? God will use men. God will direct men to bless you. And then it says right here, that the, uh, for the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now look, kung ganun ka lang, ganun din. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Ha? Kung ganun lang ang pananampalataya, ganun din ang tatanggapin mo. Sabi ko, giving is Christ-likeness. God gives more than enough and even to spare. Saan nakalagay yon? Romans 8.32 He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also what? Freely give us all things. Do you believe this? Akala nyo, spiritual things lang ito. Lahat ng bagay. Oh, kung ang Panginoon, kung ang Diyos mismo, ha, hinayaan niya ang kanyang anak mamatay sa kus ng Kalbaryo. Hinayaan niya eh. Ha? Sabi niya, He that spared not his own son. Ang Tagalog nun? Ang Tagalog nun? Ha? Ano mo ang Tagalog nun? Baka maganda sa Tagalog. He that spared not his own son. Oh, sige. Basa. Basa. Siya na hindi ipinagkait ang kanyang sariling anak. O, pwede na. Siya na hindi pinagkait ang kanyang sariling anak. Kundi ibinigay dahil sa ating lahat. Ayun. Kundi ibinigay dahil sa ating lahat. Bakit hindi naman niya ibibigay sa atin ng walang bayad ang lahat ng mga bagay? Ang linaw. Ay, niwala ba kayo ron? Ay, pwede nangyayari sa inyo. Ano iniwala ka pa rin? Ba't yun nangyayari sa'yo? Bakit? Covetous ka eh. Hindi ka kuripot. Covetous ka. You learn this now. 
Am I right? Oh, totoo yung sinabi ni Apostle Paul eh. Hindi nga pinagkait ng, pang- ng Diyos ang kanyang anak sa atin eh. Oh, ibinigay niya eh. Am I right? Ang sabi ng banala kasulatan, ha? Huh? Ang sabi ng Panginoon sa Cruz, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Di ba? Sabi niya, binigay niya sa atin lahat eh. Oh, palagay mo kaya, kung yung anak niya mismo, hindi niya pinagkait sa atin, ipagkakait niya sa iyo. Ang mga pagpapala, hindi. Ang sabi rito, How shall he not with him also what? Freely give us all things. I was telling our pastors recently in my home, I do not even need to raise money to build a building here. Have you seen me raise money here? Have you seen me? Have you heard me say, well, folks, listen, I'm going to buy a property and we need to raise some money. No. I do not even need to raise money to buy a property. I only need to inform you we're going to buy one. And to tell you, we have the money. And if the ecclesia does not have the money, this pastor has the money. Hindi ito nagyayabang. Hindi pa mamayabang ito na sabihin ko sa inyo para malaman ninyo that this coming anniversary Sunday, we're going to give our first fruit offering and we have already given more than 30% of it. I hope and pray we're going to give 50% by September 24. I'd like you to know this. The first fruit commitment of your pastor is more than 9 million. Am I earning 9 million a month? No. Am I earning 3 million a month? No. But my commitment is more than 9 million. Now look, if your pastor is the example of generous giving, then you follow me. Because you have also seen how God has blessed my life, isn't it? Oh, yes. Those blessings have make a partner na pagsubok yan. Make a partner na trial yan. Make a partner na, you know. But hey, listen. I don't care about those trials. What I want to see is how God can bless this man. That's the text for generous giving. I think I'm going to end here. Marami na pinag-usapan eh. 7.32 eh. Masakit na yung kanang pa ako eh. You know? But I think as you look at what we have talked about tonight, I think somehow the Lord has spoken to you, isn't it? Told you something you ought to realize. I'm going to continue this. It's coming Sunday if I have to. These are pearls. Pearls that you don't give the pigs. Pearls that you can only give to the sheep. Are you God's sheep? Then these pearls are for you. Shall we stand? Well, you know what happens next, isn't it? You look at yourself. You search your own heart. And listen, before you kneel down, don't kneel down and be a hypocrite. 